I'm Anna, and together with my husband Eddie and our adorable daughter, we're a family of three. We've been married for seven years and I am currently a full-time housewife. Our relationship has been good, and I thought we would continue to live happily as a family. However, I realized that this was just an illusion when our daughter Camilla turned four. By the age of four, Camilla had grown into an adorable little girl. Her sense of self had sprouted, she had become articulate, and sometimes she showed a defiant attitude. And Eddie, unable to properly counter such attitudes and statements from Camilla, often got verbally abusive. I'm your father. What's with that attitude? Wasn't it you, Dad, who ignored me? What? It's your fault for acting in a way that gets you ignored. You ignored me first, Dad. It's okay for you to ignore me, but I'm the bad one. Hey, Anna, take this cheeky brat and dump her in the mountains. Do you realize what you just said? Don't even joke about that. I hate daddy. This was the usual pattern. Unable to win with words, Eddie always ended up shouting things like taking Camilla to the mountains or kicking her out and Camilla ended up crying and going to her room. How can you say such awful things to Camilla? Can't you be a little kinder? Huh? Why do I have to give in? She's really not cute at all. Are all children this cheeky? Camilla is only four years old. It's just the toddler period now. Try to be a little more forgiving. Ha. Huh. This is so irritating. It's unclear if this exchange was the trigger, but after a while, Eddie started coming home from work only on rare occasions. Are you busy with work? I understand it's tough, but I wish you'd come home more often. Camilla's causing me so much stress I can't focus at work. That's sad. But by the time you come home, Camilla is already asleep, right? You're so noisy. It's not just Camilla, it's you too. Then let's talk about it together. That's why I find these discussions so bothersome. Saying this irritably, he went straight to the bath and then to the bedroom. The situation continued unchanged, with him staying away three nights a week. Thinking that this could not continue, I told Eddie again that we needed to talk. You really are troublesome. How many times do I have to say it's pointless? Don't you get it? It's your attitude that makes me not want to come home. Can't even rest when I'm tired. I'm sorry, but you're staying in a hotel right now, right? Continuing like this is a waste of money. And for Camilla's sake too. Eddie interrupted me mid-sentence. Ah, shut up, shut up. It's my money, so I can use it however I want. It's none of your business. And I've been wanting to say this, but from now on I'll sleep in Camilla's room. And you and Camilla sleep in the main bedroom. Why would you go that far? Once Eddie had made up his mind, he wouldn't listen. So I swallowed the words I wanted to ask. And eventually, we ended up sleeping in separate bedrooms. When we had just gotten married, Eddie had said, even if we have kids, we must always sleep together. Thinking about where those feelings had gone made me feel very sad and hurt, and at the same time, doubts about Eddie started to grow. However, without any concrete proof, I ultimately had no choice but to give up. Amidst these complicated feelings, one day, Eddie made an unexpected suggestion. Hey, shouldn't we think about building a new house soon? What brought this on all of a sudden? You like cooking, right? Don't you want a bigger kitchen? Camilla's getting bigger too, and our current house doesn't have enough rooms. She'll want her own room when she's older, so I thought it'd be better to consider building a new house. I'm surprised you thought that far ahead. Of course, it's about our precious family. That's true, but I was shocked. 
and at a loss for words for a while, as I hadn't expected to hear Eddie talk about family again. From an outsider's perspective, it's natural to think about one's family. Still, my heart was filled with joy at his sentiment. Recently, Eddie hadn't seemed to consider the family much. That's why I was so immersed in happiness. Since then, my husband and I discussed the layout and design of our new home, eagerly anticipating its completion. However, while designing the new house did increase his time at home, he still stayed away on weekdays, not coming home on some days. And a year later, our new home was finally completed. I wanted to purchase furniture and appliances to our taste, but all my choices were rejected, and for some reason, only items that Eddie liked were selected. They were all clearly fairy tale themed. Is this your taste? I didn't know that before. I wanted our new home to be fairy tale themed. I see. But I would have preferred a home with a calming wood theme. Everything's already been arranged, so please don't say anything now. I understand, but... Camilla was also surprised when she first saw it. Mom, whose house is this? Are we going to live here? She asked skeptically. Then Eddie dropped a shocking statement. You guys aren't going to live here. I have a 25-year-old cute girlfriend and a child with her. Do you realize what you're saying? You listen properly. I have a girlfriend and since we had a child together, I built this new house for us to live in. I was so bewildered that my mind went blank. I thought that starting today, our family of three would embark on a new life in our meticulously designed dream home. It was impossible to remain calm after hearing such outrageous news. Suddenly, Eddie began explaining the circumstances of his affair. Maybe about three years ago, there was this cute girl at work. I had planned to pursue her, but it turned out she was interested in me too and approached me first. As we dated, I started wanting to make her happy. I felt like I was listening to someone else's story as Eddie spoke. You and Camilla give me stress, but she doesn't stress me out at all. Instead, she makes me feel relaxed. I had a cute son with her, who is the calming source. Is that why you weren't coming home? Yeah, I was at her place. It was a moment when all the odd behaviors and actions of my husband suddenly made sense. Because our child was born. It's sad if a father isn't there, right? And now that the boy has started to crawl, her place is too small for him to crawl far. But this house allows him to roam freely. That's normal, right? You women might be fine with restricted movements, but a boy needs space and enriched time, right? What are you saying? I hadn't mentioned it, but this furniture and appliances are her taste. They're cohesive, aren't they? I thought so. It didn't seem like your taste, so it was strange. I asked what furniture and appliances she thought were cute and bought those. Perfect, right? Well, it is perfect. It's all your fault in the end. You're a failure as a wife, and although your cooking is indeed good, I'm sick of your hobbies being forced on me. And Camilla, she's just like you, really cheeky and irritating. I've thought about literally abandoning her in the mountains many times. I won't do it because I don't want to become a criminal, though. Eddie. Enough is enough. There are things you should and shouldn't say. It's insane to blame Camilla and me for your own justifications for betrayal. Whatever you say doesn't affect me and I don't care. You two can't live in this house, so let's get divorced right away and you get out. I was certain that the husband I was happy with no longer existed. You're not under some misunderstanding that you, me and our daughter could happily live as a family of three in this house, are you? If so, what a waste of time. 
Don't disturb my new family and our time together. That's a terrible thing to say. Why didn't you tell me before we started moving? It would increase the sense of despair, wouldn't it? You really are the worst. I despised him from the bottom of my heart, but I was so overwhelmed by everything that I couldn't move from where I stood. However, my daughter was different. Mom, let's just forget about dad and move out quickly. Suddenly, pulling my hand, she said it as if she was somehow excited. It was surprising she wasn't crying from shock. Puzzled, yet spurred on by Camilla, I packed our things. Still, I didn't have enough time to fully grasp the situation. Seeing this, my husband kept insisting, get out of here. Deciding that mending our relationship was impossible, I hurriedly packed and returned to my parents' house. My parents were furious when they heard my story, but there was someone even angrier than them. After a little thought, this person said with a smile, leave the rest to me. Two weeks after returning to my parents' house, I headed to the house where my husband lived to proceed with the divorce. Eddie thought I was coming alone and was quite foul-mouthed. I know you still love me, but hurry up with the procedures. I want to welcome my girlfriend to this ideal home soon, and you're making her suffer by being such a slowpoke. I'm sorry for being late, I'll start the procedures now. From the start, I was not attracted to an old woman like you. It's really great that you focused on taking care of the child after having our daughter and stop desiring me. Women who are just pretty like you get boring. Ah, is that so? My girlfriend, on the other hand, isn't just cute. She can do household chores and she makes me feel relaxed too. Well, you stand no chance against that. Plus, you nag like my mother and I'm really fed up with it. You won't be able to remarry after divorcing me. No one needs a nagging old woman. That's really rude. I'm only 30 years old, while you're a despicable old man at 35. Despicable? I'm just telling the truth. Men over 35 still have value. But women at 30 have no value. They're just old hags. Ah, I see. But you know, a boring person like you is worthless after 25. That's terrible. Enough, right? It's exhausting even talking. I've had my best years with you, but now since I'm done with you, I can toss you out like the garbage you are without a second thought. Eddie, who kept insulting me at length, really was a despicable person. I no longer felt love for him, but the damage from his verbal abuse made me feel nauseous. At that moment, the doorbell rang. Since I left the door unlocked, the person hurried inside. I could see a long foreign car arriving. Anna, are you okay? Thank you, I'm fine. You little. I can't believe you were having an affair with such an old man. What? That's what it looks like. Someone shows up in a fancy car to check on you. It's as if you're announcing you're having an affair. You first sign the divorce papers. And don't forget about the child support, property division, and the resignation. The person stood up and said this to Eddie. Why should I listen to some old man? I'm the one who initiated the divorce, so of course I'll sign it. Eddie quickly retorted and then continued to belittle us. Hey, Anna, you must be so sad to divorce me that you'd have an affair with an old geezer who's practically one foot in the coffin. Any man will do for you, huh? However, after saying all this, Eddie seemed to realize something. Huh? Wait a minute. Why a resignation letter? You don't mean to tell me you've been mocking this man without knowing who he is. Of course. I don't know any old geezer like him. That's unfortunate. What do you mean unfortunate? Then tell me who this old man is. Eddie, you've been hurling insults at the chairman of your own company. 
and he happens to be my grandfather as well. Wait, my... companies. Do I need to repeat it for you to understand? Yea, yes. I was headhunted to this company by your father. If this man is the chairman, then your father didn't need to resign from being the president. Eddie seemed confused and couldn't quite grasp the situation, so I decided to explain it to him carefully. Eddie, despite his character, was good at his job. That's why my father, who was the president at the time, scouted Eddie from another company with a generous offer. After that, my father introduced me to Eddie and we started dating. My grandfather was the president of the headquarters but decided to become the chairman when it was time for my father to take over the president's role at headquarters, and my uncle took over the company where my father had been president. Away from my father's watchful eye, Eddie probably started to do as he pleased. Since my grandfather uses my mother's family name, Eddie didn't realize he was the chairman. Moreover, my grandfather fell ill and was hospitalized three days before our wedding so they never met. I, I wasn't told about this. What if you had been told? Are you saying you wouldn't have had an affair? Or that you wouldn't have insulted the chairman by calling him an old geezer? That's, um... Eddie was visibly shaken and his face turned pale. Come on, sign the papers. Should we start with the divorce or the resignation? Ah, uh, wait please. If it's come to this, maybe we shouldn't get divorced. You were the one who said we should get divorced. What are you talking about now? Who was it that betrayed the chairman's granddaughter to switch to another woman? You'll have to take responsibility for that. That is. Perhaps imagining what was about to happen to him, his hand trembled as he tried to sign, but his feelings resisted and he couldn't move the pen easily. It was expected. Despite the prospect of a new life with his girlfriend and child, he was about to be fired from a well-compensated company. There's no guarantee that his next job will offer the same treatment. It's understandable that he would resist. I glanced at the clock and told Eddie, your beloved wife will be here in a few minutes. You better sign the papers quickly or you'll embarrass yourself in front of her. What? You called Greta too? Of course. It's not just your problem. Uh... Right on time, the sound of the front door opening echoed. I'm home, where are you, Eddie? Hello there? Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. No mistake at all. Please come in. Um... Greta was indeed cute a fairy tale like woman perfectly suited for this house. And in her arms, a small child was sleeping peacefully. Did you know that your husband was married to me when you started an affair with him? Ah, uh, yes, I knew, but it's not my fault. I can understand why you would want to say that. Then, please forgive me. There's no way I can forgive you. Now, Let's go inside, Eddie is waiting for us. As we walked into the room together, we saw Eddie with his shoulders slumped, surrounded by a multitude of documents. What are all these? These are the divorce papers, resignation forms, and documents related to property division and child support claims. Are you going to claim property division from me too? Since you're going to marry Eddie, it's natural that you would share responsibilities as a couple. Also, there's something else I need to tell you. What is it? You've been working as a cabaret girl on the side without telling the company, haven't you? Um, I don't know, was I? I had someone look into Greta. That's when I found out that the circumstances under which she and Eddie became involved were despicable. Are you being serious? You favored a girl at the club you frequented, and that girl was Greta. One day, you coincidentally saw her at the company and realized it was her. 
Then you forced a relationship on her in exchange for keeping her secret. Truly despicable. That's... That's absolutely unacceptable. It's disgusting. So Greta, I understand why you would want to say it's not your fault. You dated him reluctantly just to keep him quiet. But in the end, didn't you willingly continue the relationship? You even had a child and built a house to your liking. No, that's not true. It was all forced. Either way, I've looked into your reputation at the company. You're known for slacking and making many mistakes. You researched that much. My grandfather is the chairman of yours and Eddie's company. So when I asked around a little, I found out you can be fired due to company policy. Fired? No way. This old man can't really be the chairman. It's unfortunate that my face isn't more recognized here. But as my granddaughter said, our company prohibits side hustles. Especially if it interferes with your primary job, we have no choice but to terminate you. Such is life. Hey, you there, make up your mind and sign now. If you really want to stay at the company, that's fine, but forget about any promotions. You were treated well, but of course, that's no longer the case. If you agree to work under these conditions, sign the divorce papers next. Ah. Uh. Okay, I understand. It seemed he had finally made up his mind as he signed all the documents. Then my grandfather happily received the papers. Great. Anna, now you can finally get divorced. You can go to the apartment I've arranged for you and Camilla. The moving process should already be finished. Grandpa, thank you. What do you mean? When you drove Anna and Camilla out, wasn't Camilla positive about moving? Indeed. She didn't complain and left quite easily. Right? When a cute great-granddaughter asks her great-grandfather for help because she and her mom are in trouble, of course he's going to do his best. That's why I decided to arrange a top-notch apartment for the two of them. Oh, and you might struggle with money from now on, but you don't need to worry about Anna and Camilla. With my assets, they won't face any hardships. Good luck and a happy life to you too. Saying that, I left the scene with my grandfather. Let's go, Anna. Yes, goodbye then. I wish you happiness. I heard Eddie trying to stop me from behind, but I ignored his voice. His voice gradually seemed to turn into words blaming Greta. As we left, I could feel the tension and conflict behind us. A few days later, Eddie contacted me. Anna. Can we start over? I miss you and Camilla. Huh? Don't say such convenient things. You said you didn't want us, remember? And what about her? I ended up not remarrying her and we broke up. After getting fired, I couldn't afford the mortgage anymore, so I sold the house. Now, I'm using the money from the sale to pay off the loan, but I don't know how long I can keep up this lifestyle. Greta betrayed me. So that was the extent of your relationship with her. That's why I want to get back together with you. That way my life can go back to the way it was, right? I could get my job back and even live in a top-notch apartment. And considering Camilla, isn't it inconvenient to have only one parent? It's not inconvenient at all. We have grandpa, you know. And aren't you embarrassed to suddenly start groveling after all this? Did you fall on your head? People make mistakes and have lapses in judgment, don't they? Your actions were more than just a lapse in judgment. You built a house for your lover, furnished it according to her taste, and kicked out your wife and daughter. You think that's just a minor error? That's incredibly irresponsible. Well, that's, um... I used to respect you for your work, but after my father stepped down, you didn't work properly and just flirted with female employees. It's really embarrassing. 
That's why I'm truly glad we got divorced. Oh, and by the way, my father said that sooner or later you and Greta were both going to be fired anyway. What's all this about? Apparently you two were quite the topic of gossip in the company. Many people knew that Greta's child was yours, and the word spread up to the upper management. Even though you were treated specially because you were related to the president, almost everyone thought it was unacceptable, and the company decided you needed to be punished. That's absurd. I never want to deal with you again. So please, don't contact me ever again. Please don't say that. We've been together for 12 years, right? You must have forgotten how much you loved me. Please remember, I'm begging you. How despicable. Both Camilla and I can't take it anymore. And my whole family, we all hate you. I'm cutting you out of my life, goodbye. After saying that, I hung up the phone and immediately blocked him. Later, when I told Grandpa about the call, he summoned the whole family for a severe reprimand. Anna got hurt like this, because you all didn't manage your employees properly, am I right? That's not true, Grandpa. Then why did it come to this? My father and my uncle, who were the current presidents, were looking down, reflecting on their actions. Grandpa, with a look of realization, began to say something quite astonishing. Up until now, I've left everything to you, but after seeing how hurt Anna has been and reevaluating our company, I've discovered many complaints from the employees, dad and the others, anticipating what grandpa would say next, listened with a solemn demeanor. Therefore, I want you to continue leading the company as its president. I've decided to return to the company to support and manage the staff. And another thing, don't ever introduce another man to Anna and Camilla again. If it comes to men, I have the best judgment, so if necessary, I'll handle the introductions. The entire family, surprised, looked up and alternated glances between Grandpa and me. Um, Grandpa, that's really not necessary. I felt a bit embarrassed and tried to protest, but Grandpa seemed quite determined. One day, I accidentally answered a call from an unknown number. It was Eddie, who sounded unwell. Please, help me. Um, who is this? It's me, Eddie. Why are you calling from a different number? And what's with your voice? It's so raspy. I didn't recognize it. Greta. She came back. Well, that's wonderful. After breaking up with Eddie, Greta had left their child with her parents and returned to work at the club. However, she hadn't contributed any money to her parents and spent all her income on herself, which infuriated them. They kicked out Greta and the child, and unable to continue her nightlife, she had returned to Eddie. Eddie, heartbroken and lacking any companionship, had easily taken them back. It's far from wonderful. I work all day to save money, and she just takes it all. I can't even pay for rent or the kids' school supplies, so I have to earn extra by doing side jobs. Cough. Greta's spending habits were extravagant due to her time as a cabaret girl. She had been using all his salary on frivolities, so Eddie was forced to work day and night to support his family, but the strain had taken a toll, and he had fallen ill and was bedridden. Why don't you leave her if it's so hard? She just wants me to work as long as I can work. When I tell her that I can't afford what our son needs for daycare, she just says if you don't have money, you should work more and disappears Greta doesn't work at all. That sounds tough. Look, you haven't remarried, have you? Please marry me again. It's true I haven't remarried. But like I said before, I never want anything to do with you again. Why not? When I'm struggling like this. So what? You're just reaping what you sowed, aren't you? 
I know I've been reflecting on my actions, but can't you give me another chance? A chance? It's disgusting that you would even ask. It's all your own doing. Please, I'm asking you, leave me and my family alone. This is really goodbye this time. I hung up the phone abruptly. Afterwards, Eddie continued to contact me and had monologues about his situation in messages. I'm too sick to work and have to stay home. Yet Greta left our son and walked out. Life with my son is hard he's picking up her traits and mocks me, and there are endless troubles at daycare. I've become so lost that I went back to my parents' house. But because I betrayed you and I'm raising a child from my affair, I'm treated like I don't exist there. It's a relief that they still care for my son because it's not his fault, but I'm really at my limit. I didn't respond, but it was clear he was having a difficult time. While I felt pity, it was ultimately a situation of his own making, and I couldn't muster any other emotion. Thankfully, Eddie's parents were decent people. I hope they continue to support him in raising his child. More than anything, I hope Eddie finally takes responsibility as a father. Camilla and I are living happily without any troubles. Lately, she has been cheerfully saying, I'll find someone nice for mom. Thank you. But I'm fine. Do you want a dad, Camilla? No, that's not it. I just want mom to be really happy. Mom is truly happy just seeing you healthy, enjoying school, spending time with people you love, and watching you grow, Camilla. Then it's the same for me, Camilla said, her face lighting up with joy, yet with a hint of shyness. With my kind and lovely daughter by my side, I know we'll always be together. I'm committed to nurturing her with care until the day she's ready to set out on her own.